In this training, we will introduce you to XPath and explain what it is, why we use it, and how XPath can be used to repair agents and fix certain types of errors. To learn more about XPath, please refer to the Mozenda Help Center under the search topic XPath. Before we get into the training, it's important to understand that no website is perfect, and there's an infinite variety of website formats. We've attempted to accommodate as many formats and styles as possible. As a Mozenda user, you may discover that certain sites are more difficult to use than others. If some automatic features in the builder are not working correctly, or if you get errors that are difficult to fix, it could be a good time to use XPath to solve the problem. To understand what XPath is, let's look at an example of when it's used. We'll start with an agent that has entered into an error state. This agent collects product information and clicks the next button to advance the page using the page list action. For some reason, the agent returns an item not found error when it attempts to click the next page button. I've tried to repair it by using built-in features like adding an alternate location, but I'm unable to get this agent to successfully navigate to the next page of the list. Fortunately, when all else fails, XPath is often the solution. Let's see how XPaths work and how we can fix the error. You'll notice two new windows you might not have seen before, showing you the XPath and the website's HTML. You'll need these when working with XPaths, and I'll explain them in part two of this training. Every object on a web page, such as the Next button, has a location in that page's HTML. When an action is created that targets that object, such as a page list action, Mozenda uses its location within the HTML to find that object. The written location, seen here, is called an XPath. When I create my page list action, the builder attempts to generate an XPath that would locate that object in the HTML. This website has an abnormal format, so the automatically generated XPath can't find the Next Page button in the HTML. Here's where knowing how to use XPath comes in handy. I can manually change the target location of the action, in this case a page list action, to match the Next button's actual location in the HTML by writing a new XPath. Notice that the XPath looks similar to a file address on your computer. A file address references folders and the folders inside them, going down until you reach the actual file. The hierarchy from top to bottom to get to a specific file is called a path, and the file address specifies that path, as shown here. This is exactly how an XPath works. HTML is organized into a similar hierarchy to files on your computer, and the written path from top to bottom to get to a specific object rather than a file, like this next button, is called an XPath. Instead of folders, HTML is organized into nodes. Many nodes, called parent nodes, have nodes under them, similar to subfolders. These are called child nodes. I can use the XPath to follow this hierarchy down from parent node to child node until I reach the target item, the next button. Similar to folders, nodes can have different names, such as HTML or body, and parent nodes can have several child nodes with the same name. As you can see here, the next button is one of two child nodes with the same name, spam, under the parent node A. To specify which child node to choose, an XPath often includes a number in its written path. For example, this XPath expression shows that the next button is the first span child node of its parent, the A node. Because I've already attempted to use the automated features to help the builder find the next button, I'm now going to manually assign the page list action to the next button by writing a new XPath. First, let's get to know what our next button looks like in the HTML. The node that contains the next button has an attribute. Attributes are frequently attached to the node and provide more information about that node's purpose or content. Fortunately, 
This node's title attribute has a value that plainly identifies that it contains the next button. I'll use this information to write an XPath. Unless you're already learning about XPaths, you may not recognize everything I'm about to do. This process will be explained in greater detail in part two of this training. I'll start by deleting the default XPath written automatically by the builder. Rather than specifying the path from top to bottom in my XPath, I'll write an XPath that searches for any A node, indicated by typing double forward slash A. Then, within a set of square brackets, instead of a number, I'll specify that this A node has a title attribute, indicated by the at sign title, of next page, making sure it matches what I see in the HTML. Notice that the item not found warning is gone. As I test the agent, I can see it gathering results from multiple pages of the list, indicating that the page list action is now operating on the next page button, as desired. Because XPaths are sometimes necessary to augment the automated features of the tool, the most effective Mozenda users become proficient at learning and implementing XPaths in their agents. This concludes part one of the introduction to XPaths, where we learned what an XPath is and the value of XPaths in the extraction process. Proceed to part two of this training to learn when and how to use XPaths.